everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandboxing Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 In this video I present the Super Guppy Super Guppy was used and is still used to transport rocket parts and spacecraft and uh, NASA has used it for 50 years since the 1960s starting with the S4B stage of the Saturn V maybe not starting maybe they transported something else before that but most famously the S4B stage of the Saturn V and um, I think most recently I saw it uh, with uh, Ryan, the Orion spacecraft coming out of it. Uh, it's got a bay that can fit something 6.6 .6 meters in diameter. So anything less than that will do. But of course it can't fit something that is particularly heavy. Uh, it has to be something that's relatively hollow, unfueled obviously. And uh, its propellers, you know, it can go about 220 knots at most. Uh, well, it might be able to go to 250 uh, on a light payload. But yeah, I decided to make the body of it. You can see here. Originally it was a B-29. B-29 was the basis for the design and then that got turned into a C-97 Straddle Freighter. That got turned into a Boeing 7, uh, 377 Straddle Cruiser. Then the pregnant guppy, which is different from this, uh, you could probably tell it by it having more of a B-29-ish tail, rounded, instead of uh, sharp like this, and it was also smaller. And then finally, after this, uh, people have replaced this with the Airbus Beluga, but NASA still runs one of these, because, well, why not? It's an interesting sort of plane. I made the body, I did not make anything else on here. It's just one part that I made and that's the body that you see. I expect that nobody else has made this body. I mean, um, it is a very particular shape. It's not one of these. This is my airplane install. I've got all sorts of cockpits in here, but I doubt I'll find this one. So it takes a little bit of effort to make something like this. Um, I, I one time saw a Crispy Bacon stream on Twitch uh, trying to make a uh, super guppy like this it, it does have role play sort of benefits right i mean if you're going to want to ship your parts over you could do that you know people who like role playing that sort of thing and i look forward to doing stuff uh with this with the lynx spacecraft that i uh, designed in previous videos so yeah that's basically what i made it for because the lynx doesn't go by rail it's too wide anyway uh, the engines are just reconfigured AJE engines. I forget which mod these are from. Um, nope, no idea. Uh, but I reconfigured them to be the correct engines, though I don't know if all the stats are correct. I just made sure that horsepower was correct. And um, the wings, all the other parts are either B9 procedural wings or stock landing gear. That's it. Now I did put the cargo in. So open bay. Oh, uh, the front landing gear really ought to be on this section in front here, but that's not feasible because if I try and actually put it there, it'll float out here when I open the bay uh, because animated parts can't have things attached to them. So, yep, unfortunately, this is all just floating. Of course, it would be supported by the wheel so that it doesn't, uh, it isn't entirely supported by the hinge. But I put the S4B tank here. Let's uh, pull it out here so you can see. Maybe you'll recognize it. There you go. But, uh, the larger tanks on the Saturn V were transported by barge. So this was the only tank that was transported by plane. So you can see if it there. It's um, 10 tons, which is pretty heavy for this plane. And it just barely fits inside, as you can see. This is the, these are the correct dimensions for the plane. Um, well, I think the wingspan is a little bit longer than this. The length is 43 meters. The wingspan here is 47.1. I think it's supposed to be 47.6. So I might have to lengthen that eventually. But I am intending to make my own wings. I wanted to fly this to see how it flies with these wings so I can compare when I make my own wings how they do. And of course, uh, if they're getting the right sort of uh, aerodynamics from fair mirror space or whether I need to do something else like have a special section in it that defines the wing for fair mirror space to use or whether fair mirror space can just look at the shape and tell that it is a good wing 
Anyway, uh, let's take it outside and see how it runs. Okay, it's sort of a little bit bouncy on this landing gear, but there's a surefire way to stop that. And that's by extending this and extending the ramp. Because the ramp has a collider, you can see it stops it dead. Um, the, I'm pleased that the ramp extends the proper distance. However, I think I should have decreased the slope of it. You can sort of see over there that I had an S4B on uh, little rover wheels. That rolls just fine, but it can't roll up this ramp. It gets stuck. It doesn't have enough traction. So this, this is too steep for it. Now, the real one didn't have a ramp at all. The real one had a little elevator, uh, sort of like what loads bags into airliners uh, in order to get the, uh, the cargo in. Obviously, a ramp is not the best way to do that, but and I need to change the opposite of that animation to close bay, not open bay. Anyway, putting on the brakes, throttling up, ignition. It's a little bit annoying that it has a sound even when I haven't ignited the engines, but we'll pass on that. So again, I just made one part. The rest of this is uh, not mine right now. According to MechJet, we have an hour worth of fuel, but actually we have a lot more than that. Uh, if you see a consumption rate of 1.7 and multiply that by 3,600 seconds in an hour, but that's definitely more than an hour. All right, gear off. Actually, extend flaps two notches. It is a strange, strange plane, but that's what makes it worth uh, making. You're not gonna see this anywhere else. I, I don't. I'm pretty sure there isn't one for X Plane Eleven. And I don't think there was one for, like, Microsoft Flight Sim. So... Yep, a unique experience. Now, unfortunately, with firm airspace, for some reason or another, uh, probably good aerodynamic reasons, like the wings aren't shaped properly, um, the takeoff speeds are always higher than they, should, they are in real life. Uh, about here, I think I can rotate. And... And we're off the ground. And that's a bit fast. I mean, we're talking about 150 knots, maybe. 140 to 150 knots. The top speed of this is 250 knots. And... Um, its cruise speed is 220 knots. I'm just making sure we've got nice solid lift before actually retracting the landing gear. Okay. Now, I made sure that the mass of the body was correct based on the mass of everything else. So I put everything else on, checked the empty mass. Wow, look at that. He does want to go down still. Um, checked what the empty mass was and adjusted the body to that. And the uh, correct empty mass for the entire plane is around 46 to 47 tons. The maximum takeoff mass is 77 tons. So it's got about 24 tons usable. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's very finicky right now. I think I'll retract the flaps, but... Okay, and so right now we're 67 tons, just for reference. Oh, you know what? The, is there autopilot? There we go. Fly-by-wire autopilot thingamajig. Maybe that'll be better. Yeah, that, that's a little bit better. Atmospheric autopilot, I mean. The shader is a little bit weird, but I did want the shininess on the hull. Sometimes it goes darker, sometimes it's light. Performance-wise, I think this is fairly realistic. You can see we're going up at a very moderate pace. Um, we're at about 210 knots. 
I mean, it goes without saying that we're encountering a lot of drag. There are colliders all over it, otherwise the bay wouldn't work right. In fact, nothing I've made so far with Blender and imported into Girl Space Program has had more little colliders all over it than this one. The special shape of it required quite a lot of work as far as colliders are concerned. You can't just, you know, make a collider in an arbitrary shape. It has to be a little convex thing. So yeah, lots of work there. But anyway, uh, drag 40 kilonewtons as you can see. Lots of lift though, but that's because we're going up. Mind you, that's a drag of 40 kilonewtons against uh, thrust on each of these engines of 23 kilonewtons right now. So that's altogether 92. So it's producing 92 kilonewtons and it's got a drag of 40 kilonewtons against it. Well, let's uh, sort of get into a cruise sort of situation. It only had something like a 20,000 foot, maybe 25,000 foot cruise, uh, not cruise altitude, ceiling. That was its ceiling. Yeah, 25,000 foot ceiling. So well under what normal airliners travel at. Unfortunately, I've somewhat misplaced the cockpit. Um, uh, the cockpit needs to be further forward. I just used the Mark III cockpit with uh, raster prop monitor and everything, but it needs to be further forward. Right now it's inside the forward bay as far as uh, Kerbal is concerned. It's here instead of up here. People have asked about Kerbal Constructs, so this is the real KSC mod that places the shuttle landing facility, and real KSC requires Kerbal Constructs, and that's how you get this facility, and it's a much better runway than the stock runway, which is over here. So much recommended, especially if you plan to do airplane things. Oh, I forgot to mention Nebula decals for the decal on the vertical stabilizer for the NASA logo. It looks really weird from the back. I mean, it looks weird from many angles, like this one. But it definitely looks weird from the back. Oh, we're definitely going too fast. Well, let me try and... Do preemptory S-turns. This sort of flies like the shuttle. <laughs> Not too different. Okay, brakes. Okay. We are back. We'll sort of do clip into the runway a bit though. Hmm. And there you have it. The Super Guppy. <laughs> well, what can I say? At least I landed it. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.